Hello everyone, welcome to this first CIS roundtable of 2023. To quote from Stefan Banach, a Polish mathematician and founder of functional analysis and one of the great minds of the 20th century, mathematics, beautiful and most powerful creation of the human spirit. It's to discuss this topic that we are gathering today with members of our student, faculty, and parent bodies. I'm Antigone and I'm a student year 12 I'm the head of operations at the math council team. I'm Edward. I'm in year 12. I've been in CIS since year 7. And I'm the president of the math council. I'm Mrs. Louie. I'm the assistant head of math right now. I'm also the classic coordinator. Hi, I'm Miss Halliday. I'm the head of secondary mathematics. And um, this is my fourth year um, at CIS. So, uh, Jack, uh, I have two jobs. One is actually working in the industry as, um, as a managing director for the machine learning center for uh, JP Morgan. And another job is being a mathematics uh, professor, uh, professor of science practice in uh, HKUST. My first question I would like to ask you is how you personally first became passionate about mathematics. In my high school mock exam, so like year 13 exam, I was ranking third last in mathematics in my class. And uh, I wanted to study uh, journalism, but in my generation, journalism was not considered to be a safe subject. Uh, so, uh, and then uh, I didn't want to study medicine, so I studied engineering um, out of no choice. And uh, so that's uh, so I did never liked mathematics in my high school. In the university, uh, the mathematical questions are very different. It's about abstract ideas, and uh, was the more abstract, uh, the better uh, I was in those subjects. So, I was very good at topology and and abstract algebra, which does not require any computation at all. And so, uh, so it changed. So one of the first times I really enjoyed it was actually teaching grade six math, and I was teaching math and science together. And during that time it was when I was really trying to teach kids how to do long division. And actually when I was looking into long division and why we get those numbers, it then made a lot more sense in terms of what we were doing. And as I was teaching math more and understanding why it is that we do the things that we do, to me that was more interesting than actually doing, trying to get to the final answer, getting the right answer. And that's when I started actually really enjoying math and ultimately teaching math. When I was in primary, I tried out some math competition problems and though I wasn't really that great at it, it changed the way that I perceived math. So all these questions were always unexpected and questions that you can just get away with by being good at computation or uh, using the routine processes that you memorize. So there's always a sense of vulnerability in that you sometimes don't really know where to start or where it's going to. And once you do reach a conclusion which is very elegant after spending a lot of time and a lot of frustrating uh, effort, um, that is a really satisfying process and that's what I really enjoy about math. I never like hated math, but I never also like loved it. But I think um, it started to change when I started to explore math outside like the context of a classroom. And I found like a lot of interesting problems and domains of math that were just like not taught at school. And that to me was so much more interesting because I could do a lot of self-exploration. How can schools in general cultivate an appreciation for mathematics in all of their students? Traditionally, uh, mathematics is viewed as um, a discipline where we, are, we get to the right answer as quickly as possible. And, uh, and that's it. And that, and that kind of approach you know, leaves, um, leaves a lot of people behind. We have to create a culture where um, you know, mathematics is so much more than that. It's about exploration, and it's about uh, you know, investigating, it's about, um, it's about spotting patterns. And the way that we, and, and also you know, where students are active participants in their own learning. So that, what I mean by that is that they um, construct their own understanding by engaging with these kind of uh, you know, problem-based and uh, critical thinking um, kind of tasks. Um, so I think you know, to create that kind of culture where students feel, where all students really can be successful, we really need to adopt the, you know, the right instructional um, approaches. And this kind of learning um, really gets students to see that um, Mathematics is just it's a process of trying, failing, and then you know through through that kind of um, inherent struggle, students will build you know confidence and mathematical ability. So we really have to create a culture where 
we're moving away from the idea that we need to get to the right answer as quickly as possible, where we have more of a focus on the process um, and um, you know, developing these kind of transferable uh, skills, such as problem solving and critical thinking. Um, I think by doing that, we can, you know, students can come to realise that everybody can be successful at, at maths. Sometimes students will become discouraged with mathematics. How can we overcome that discouragement? It seems to be confidence is the issue uh, when it comes to math and uh, discouragement. And it's very similar to what we see in well-being as well. It's to do with resilience and perseverance. Um, a lot of the times, it's not as if the kids don't want to do it. They reach a dead end and they just want to give up. And a lot of the times, it's just to do with those my new things that actually discourages a lot of kids from actually being able to solve or even trying out that problem. What I've been trying to do in, in math classes is to basically get them to see that, you know, here is a way into this problem. Here is another way you can go into this problem. There are many ways you could go into this problem. Um, and, you know, and hopefully by, you know, showing them all that, they will be able to develop their own strategy or way of at least approaching that problem. So it doesn't seem so difficult for them. With a number of your peers, you've created a math council. Tell us more about it. So um, when I joined CIS in year seven, I've had more meaningful interactions with teachers. I've done more uh, meaningful classes and attended more competitions, and which has made me enjoy math a lot more. And since I'm a senior student, I want to do something to give back and kind of give others a similar experience. So the math council is composed of similarly passionate students like Antigone, and we have support from the school and the math department. So our overarching belief is that all students have some innate potential in math, even if they don't know it yet, and you want to find ways for them to realize that. And so more specifically on our goals, first of all, is that we want to nurture a genuine interest in math. So, and we also want to give avenues for students to be able to express it and share it with the CIS community, such that students can uh, not only learn math skills in class, but also become inspired by their peers. And second of all, is that, um, as Mr. Halley has already addressed, we want to change the way math is being perceived and conceived of in CIS. So the first part is to show the different faces of math, and most importantly is to show the wider applications of math to the real world. Uh, for, for instance, you can see that math is becoming very important even in the humanities, because data collection at a larger scale is being able to happen. Statistics is becoming, and data analysis, is becoming far more important in subjects like economics and geography, which you usually would not associate with the mathematics. And you want to show students that what they learn in the classroom has a weight in the real world. Most importantly, you want to make math something that's very approachable. So we want to have, say, for example, senior students and alumni to come and talk about their experiences with math, and also for students to share their math experiences on the math journal, to make sure that younger students, when they struggle with math, they know that that's a universal feeling. That's something that everybody feels, and that's just part of the process. What are the kinds of events that you have in mind for the second half of 2022-23? We have plans to um, create a math journal um, that's open to submissions from all students, and we'll edit it and hopefully have um, a um, online version, and we're hoping to publish that sometime in April or May. So look out for that, and if you also want to write about anything that's like passionate, that's like related to math, maybe you read a book that you really enjoyed that was about math, and you want to do a book review or book recommendation, or maybe you just saw this really interesting problem that you want to share about, or maybe you just you know have excellent mathematical communication that you'd like to display. Um, we're also um, welcoming submissions from all across the year levels, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Besides that, we also have um, a lot of workshops planned for math competitions because I think there, um, well, there is definitely some support from the math department as well as all the math teachers who encourage students to sign up for math competitions. We want there to be an environment where students can like learn from each other and also practice together, and we feel like that will foster a much um, healthier and a much better environment for people participating in competitions and will maybe sort of alleviate the pressure from that. Uh, we're hoping to also run like house events where it's uh, math related and we can um, give house points out. I think people always treat math as like a it's just reasoning or it's just numbers or something and we really want to bring a like light to maybe some more historical facts about math or just like famous people in it or like what they did or like something about like mathematicians becoming lawyers you know like it's pretty interesting and like we could do that as like trivia within house challenges what do you love most about teaching mathematics generally speaking with mathematics i think what i love about it the most is these questions that we get to answer 
you can answer a lot of different types of questions, whether it's social, whether it's related art, music, loads of things. Uh, there is a lot of connections that math can make to other subjects. And I think what really excites me about math right now is how can I show that to students? So when I talk to my year eights about high level economics and how they can test whether or not their startup is going to be viable, that is what interests them. And how slopes and intercepts can be related to that. And then how these models may not be realistic. Why aren't they realistic? Um, you know, there's a lot to talk about. And I think that's what engages students in mathematics. How do you see maths evolving at, at CIS over the next several years? Well, I think um, it's going to be multifaceted. Um, first of all, I think, you know, whatever, whatever direction we're going, whatever initiatives that we introduce, there needs to be um, research-based and evidence-based. Um, and I think, you know, with Vision 33, um, it's going to open up a whole new range of possibilities. Now, the IB Plus pathway uh, with Vision 33, which recognises that perhaps DP is not the best route for everyone. Um, and I think with the IB Plus programme, that really opens up the opportunity for us to be very creative and think outside the box in terms of where we go with our um, mathematics curriculum. And I envisage, um, at, at CS, I see that we're having an ever, an ever more kind of diverse uh, student population. And I envisage that personalised learning is going to play <coughs> quite a big role in um, whatever mathematics programmes we develop within the IB Plus um, kind of framework. And that could be, you know, um, individualised personalised learning programmes, or, or it could be you know, maybe we don't teach maths as a standalone subject at all, maybe that's embedded within other um, curricular areas, integrated with other curricular areas. I think, you know, just, there are lots of possibilities um, that open up through the kind of IB, IB plus pathway, so it'll be interesting to see how, how that develops. Can you talk to us a little bit about the importance of math in today's world? Today's work is actually mostly building on uh, results that was actually done long, long time ago in terms of mathematics. So, like, I mean, mostly 50, 60 years ago. So, uh, so I guess for our students, uh, it would be they would be the one creating the thing to be done in the future. Mathematics, a lot of time, is about how to apply the definition of one concept and apply it to completely different aspect. Let me give an example. I'm sure, uh, I don't know whether people have heard about chat GPT. It's a new program that actually can answer wonderful questions that you can ask, okay, what is uh, blah blah blah, and they can they talk you back, okay, you can go to the website and discover about it. So this is the most modern application of natural language processing. And then one day, some people thought, why don't we think about probability? Okay, so I went blank, the cinema. Now, probability, what is the most likely thing that actually come up in that blank is two, right? With very, very high probability. So we think about probability and we just forget about anything about grammar and forget anything about that and just think about probability and just try to think about what is the highest probability for the next word. That is ChatGPT, as simple as that. So it is all about natural language processing. The fundamental model is about the probability of the next word. And that revolutionized the entire field of natural language processing and you have ChatGPT. So I guess uh, for application uh, for our students, for the next one, will be about how to apply very, very different concepts to a very, very different problem. Final words from you to messages to your fellow students at CIS that you'd like to share? A long time ago, I used to be like really stressed out about the scores I would be getting uh, or the awards in certain competitions. And it, I feel like once the feeling of frustration and being stuck is something that is not foreign anymore and something that is shared amongst like, a group, I think that's when you start to view uh, competitions less as a test, like a school test, and evolves more into like a game. And that's um, an attitude that I would like many students to have in the CS community. So with the Math Council, 
I think you should give it a try. Give math a try. Give our events a try. Give anything related to math a try. Thank you very, very much to each of our participants for your truly remarkable and inspirational insights into the splendor of mathematics, the splendor of mathematics in general, and the splendor of mathematics at CIS. Thank you very, very much as well to everyone who has tuned into this roundtable. Please take care.